we have the beautiful, the illustrious Capricorn. Bam, 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 bam. I happen to be a Capricorn ascendant. Lovers, if I have one astrological piece of advice for you, what I've learned, what I'd like to share with you, I could be wrong. I've been wrong once. It's a cold night in hell. <laughs> Check your ascendant sign. You got to find out the time of your birth. It changes every two hours. It's the sun on the horizon. Look at that beautiful electric storm in my background. This is a faded video right here. The heavens are opening up tonight. And I'm here to bring down Jaja. I got my Rastafarian beads. Rastar. They do astrology, dog. Holly Selassie was born, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah was born on the first day of the Leo season, which we're in right now, which is in our eighth house. So this is gonna give us a little bit more emphasis on our scorpionic nature. Capricorn, ascendant. You have more scorpionic energy than you might think. I would almost even recommend reading the horoscope for Scorpios, especially this month with the sun there. You have Mercury, Mercury and retrograde there. So then your mind is even gonna be more in the world of the occult, of what's hidden, of those deep emotions, also of that deep, passionate, compassionate love, especially with Jupiter in Scorpio, also shining light onto those things that are hidden in the depth and bringing love to it and expansion so that we can point out things that are hidden and hurt. And this has to do with often um, what's in our circles. And now we had Jupiter retrograde in your 11th house, which is um, your Aquarian type stuff. Um, your social groups, your um, karmic rewards from your 10th house, what you're seen as. From your six house worth, six house worth. I've lost my speech. Okay, so there's some, there's some beneficial things to help us do some deep spiritual work right now. This is gonna be a long reading. Get comfortable. Go pour some tea. I got charts on charts with cards and. A little bit of wine. I'm sneaking in a cigarette because this is an intense time, Capricorn. More for the ascendant than the for the sun, it's soul stuff. For the ascendant, it's material stuff you go point at and be like, oh, that's why it's hard for me to make money right now. That's why it seems like the world is against me right now. That's why my passion is. Oh, here and there, my energy is up and high, and I feel like I have so much karmic teachings on me that are coming to an end. Saturn type archetypes in your world of controlling, of structure, of all that, fading, dying off. So you can release and be your true self without being unfaithful and over criticizing yourself and not being afraid to have faith in the universe that the universe is tilted in your favor asking for you to trod on you courageous goat not just a goat but a goat fish bring you closer to that scorpionic deep water energy that you're asked to dive into now and that you're gonna surround yourself with scorpionic people and you're gonna love them and they're gonna love you in a, that's such a karmic bond, the Capricorn and the Scorpio. Because we're asked to almost be like the devils in this world, and we're gonna be looked upon as the devils, but what we're really trying to do is socially, consciously evolve, y'all. Best friends, Capricorn.
Capricorn Ascendant. Saturn has been a very heavy influence on my life of restricting me of trying to be who I want to be. Saturn in your first house. Retrograding. Pluto, deep transformation, slow fucking forever taking his time through our sign, moving ass, powerful ass, Pluto. But Saturn's the boss of this party. Pluto's in the back causing trouble to try to freaking not happy that he's not the boss of it anymore. Structures in your life being actually changing. You have a trine. We have a trine into our fifth house of creative projects. Uran is there. Creative projects, often we are more creative from home. Uh, or we're very, we work diligently and we're hard workers. I'd be surprised if you're even watching this right now, Capricorns. I pray that you are. Because I am you, you are me, we are we. Okay. See, and the way that we're seen in the world is often scorpionic. That's our 11th house. That's how we deal with Aquarius ages. We kind of have to be that person that stings. That person that will dig deep. And we have Jupiter there making that an easy thing to do right now. Going forward. And now being seen more in the community at large. Um, really adding to your social network groups at large, the bigger audience. Really having your technological genius come through more now than other, than it, especially it was. Although we still have Mercury in retrograde, which will go forward. Let's talk about that. Mercury backed up into your eighth house. Not being able to communicate your deep, dark, the occult. This is going to lend the Capricorn, Ascendant, and Sun to be more into the occult. The Sun, you'll, it'll be even more hidden. And now we're going to have uh, the Sun, have an, where it is right now, bringing up those deep emotions to the surface for healing and to heal others and then to be able to talk about it but being scared to do it and to make you really do it from a true authentic place with Mercury and retrograde in the eighth house where the sun is and then we have our eclipse there a total surprise a total revealing a total unveiling of something deep in your weird taboo that you've kept behind closed doors, a cult, a cult, cult ocular, hidden from the eye, the ocular. And then going forward, <laughs> into your ninth house of higher learning. And sometimes you're too overcritical about it, but then you have Mercury coming to make its home there in your ninth house, so that it's going to also, where Venus just was blessing it, leaving a nice path for Mercury to go through your ninth house of higher learning, to stop being overcritical, but to really start learning even more. Woo! And sharing that knowledge from a guru type place. Venus is touching that and that's where it is right now. And that's not where Venus likes to be. But she's gonna move into her 10th house where she loves to be, her home in our 10th house of career. So we just have her not there and actually hasn't been there for a long time about to show up there. So if you haven't been shown love in your career and rather you feel like on your derriere, it's because Venus hasn't been there for years. <laughs> For what seems like a year. And then we're going to have her go through that and then stop in Scorpio, who we sextile with, who we vibe with, who has Jupiter there. And she's going to go retrograde there to spread even more love into how you're seen and received and what you receive from the greater collective whole and what you give to this very age that we're entering into and which you have such a big part of. And in our 12th house, not much going on. <laughs> uh, 
sext uh, yeah, how much going on in your 12th house. It's really all about you right now, your first house. Saturn retrograde at the early part of it. To help you, the things that you weren't able to change on your Saturn retrograde and the things foreshadowing your Saturn retrograde, the things at your Saturn retrograde, look into that, I'll, this is a whole other video. Not just happening, but then happening, you feel a taste of it, then it going back, and to go back over with even a deeper grid of sandpaper, to go forward again with the less one, because hopefully it's already done the work, and you're learning these cosmic le lessons, and with this full moon that we're getting ready for in Pisces, which is gonna really bring psychic awareness and intuition to an all-time high, are we gonna um, be able to handle that psychic energy right now? Because here's what happened in ancient Atlantis. <laughs> you didn't think this was gonna go to ancient uh, our Atlantis civilization, did you? Shout out to that light for looking great and for me putting that incense stick in the perfect place. Wow, this is beautiful. I made a little bit of effort to create this. I hope you enjoy it. And remember, this is intense. We have to remember to breathe in this time. Let's do that together. This is also a dangerous time for us to drink too much, especially with the upcoming things. Hopefully you're not a Scorpio sun, so you'll be able to handle overindulgence more. Don't let your imperfections keep you from serving the greater good. If you wait till you're perfect, till you start teaching, then you're never going to start teaching. That goes out to my Scorpios. Who think they know it all? That's why it's a Capricorn hates Scorpio. <laughs> my best friend and I, but then we love each other too. It's that thing. It's not like this. It's like this. I would die for him. He's like the total opposite of me. A Scorpio, opposite Taurus. He's a Taurus moon earth and water. Now is the time to bring together earth and water so that you can manifest. And make sure that you do that alchemy carefully because make sure what you manifest is what you want to manifest. And so now with the sun in Leo is really giving an opportunity to see where it is that your heart really lies. And what is your true authentic self? And what is that journey through this and getting ready to go into Virgo who's a great servant the great hostess the one who brings in all the great blessings of summer and spring and who hands them out as well shout out to the Virgin Mary the mediatrix between her son the sun and us the Virgo constellation Right now we're in the line of Judah constellation. The sun on its throne, victorious. And the sun enters in victorious. Cancer, the sacred scarab. I'm giving you this occult knowledge because you like it, you love it, and I'm, I know that. And you need it, to be honest with you. My best friend, Capricorn, son, has a cult tattooed on his leg. He even know what it meant, and he spelt it a little bit different with his K, which is actually lit. He doesn't really know why he got it. Faded meetings, faded meetings, um, synchronicities to happen to you right now. Not being afraid to be looked upon as an adversary, as a devil, 
in this world that's ruled by devils. By Saturn, our ruler gone wrong. It's like girls gone wild. This world is Saturn gone wild. So now you have the most energy and power to master yourselves and to not look to master over others, but to do that from a loving way, which you do so well. And which you have Pluto there now that's bringing that more to the forefront of your persona. Your second house, Mars going retrograde, squaring Uranus, going broke all of a sudden, losing faith. Your plan's not going like you thought they would go. A creative project being stalled, a birth of a child having complications, an entertainment taking the stage and it not going wrong or using that energy to take that stage courageously with this Leo energy and it turning that friction and that challenge into an opportunity for taking the stage and then having it end in an elated way that you could never have thought or even imagined that's Uranus in your fifth house making a beautiful trine to Saturn in your first house. Now Saturn's no longer our enemy. Saturn's our friend who helps us to build and a structure and to discipline ourselves and to align ourselves with the laws that are natural, that are in place for our conscious development and awakening. And to not only do that for ourselves, but then to be that leader and be that boss quality into organizing structures for that, for the massive. Ooh, I just got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> this lightning show in the background. Very Uranian. The king of the heavens. Very Jupiterian Thor with his lightning thunderbolt and our sextile sign of Scorpio. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Calm down. Oh. Oh. All right, 17 minutes, this seemed like 17 eternities. See that dish up there? It's just bringing in freaking all the vibes. I'm just channeling them. Ha <laughs> ha, I can feel it. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is doubt, true faith in you. And where is there despair? Hope forevermore. Master, our only one, our heavenly one, let me not be deceived or to deceive Neptune. Let me not so much seek to be loved, but to love of. All right, that's enough astrology. If you want to link me up for a personal reading to find out how this intersects, how these angles, angels are speaking to you, these angles are messengers to us. Living things, the planets, living conscious things. The way that a fish in the water sees a human's foot is the way that we see the planets. Right now in this reality, a planet has a little bit more energy than you. The sun has a little bit more power than you, but this is just you and you're on your evolutionary path to be that. So be that. This card doesn't want to go in. It wants to stay out and talk at you. The high priestess getting in touch with that Cancerian, beautiful, spiritual, Piscean, Neptunian, uh, feminine, creative energy and doing it in a balanced way between the dichotomy of severity and mercy. Being severe to not letting people overtake you. Being severe and being the master of your emotions so that you could be the pomegranate behind it, that creative juice. And now you could balance them and so you can manifest in the material world quicker than ever with this water trine. Crossing this energy. 
the Empress Venus, who's going to pass through and then go in retrograde. When Venus hits Scorpio and goes retrograde, also be aware of unexpected pregnancies or ideas coming from out of no seemingly nowhere and then really gaining fruition quickly in our um, groundation in our subconscious um, not working hard enough not staying focused on the task that's at hand and knowing that really we need to learn more we need to keep on learning we need to never think that we've known everything but also don't let that energy of thinking that you don't know everything keep you from teaching and dare I say even preaching in your recent history. An entrepreneurial effort that has had a hard start crowning you. Having to clarify which path you want to take to materialize in this world in your near future. Oh my god, the Ten of Pentacles. Beautiful ending, a happy home, riches, which is why the Capricorn always makes itself up to the top of the hill. Its journey is arduous. Have you seen the mountain goat hanging on a cliff in weird ways? But it gets itself to the top. Now's not a time to be over um, critical of these steps, but a trust like that fool card that we have. Ah, <laughs> with the nine of pentacles. Be a fool right now. Be that lion-hearted, authentic child and appreciate the Venus beauty that's passing through some beautiful parts of us, especially in how we're seen in this world and what we have to offer it. We're about to have the light shine on us and we deserve it. Fuck it, I'll say that. We deserve it. Self-worth, you deserve it. Ooh.